Rob Zerjav is President and General Manager of the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers, the 2012 recipients of the highly coveted Larry McPhail Award, symbolizing the top promotion effort in minor league baseball. Individually, Rob has been awarded the honor of Midwest League Executive of the Year in 2007 and also in 2012. It's a pleasure to sit down with such a talented veteran of the minor league baseball front office in the newly renovated Time Warner Cable Field Club level to talk about his collaborative journey with Pendulum from initial ballpark concept to final project completion. So Mr. Zerjav, let's get into the details. Uh, there's many people that have contributed to this project, no doubt. You know, there's that famous saying that uh, success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. Um, but that being said, uh, in my opinion, you were the driving force behind this project. You were the loudest voice. Uh, and we started talking a long time ago before this came to fruition. So let me ask you this. Um, what does it take to get a project like this done? Well, I think for us, it takes it takes an awful lot. And, and there were a lot of people that, that were driving forces behind this. I mean, obviously, we've been working on this together probably for 10, 11 years. Uh, and I just happened to be in the position to, and I was good. <laughs> I was going to be that orphan if it didn't work out, but uh, for us, we're a community-owned team. Um, the owners of the stadium are a nonprofit group, so we had to really work hard to convince multiple parties. Um, it was nice that we didn't have a government entity, we didn't have a city that we had to, to, to try to get this project through, but it really was just about showing that passion, showing what, it, what could be done. Uh, it was seeing what other teams were doing and bringing proof back as to what was working and uh, just a lot of hard work, a lot of keeping at it and, and again having that passion that we knew what we were doing and, and this was going to be a successful project. So you weren't here for the original five million dollar build in 95, you came in two seasons after that, but you follow up here in 2012 as the president and general manager of the team with a major renovation, what I actually what I call an addition. So how did your history, I mean, I remember when we were sitting here opening night talking with my family and my wife asked you, what jobs have you had? You're like, man, I've done this, the, and you've done a lot of, you've had a lot of roles at the project, at, at, at the, with the team. So how does your history with the team play a factor in where we are today? Yeah, I started here as an unpaid intern and, and what I saw at the time is that my goal was to become a GM of a minor league team and what I saw from that, from that beginning was you have to be a part of everything. You have to see how everything works, uh, and I did. I ended up in, in ticket sales and baseball operations and stadium operations and really worked kind of in, in every facet. Um, for me, the, the project, it was about finding out what the customers wanted. It was finding out what other teams were doing, what was working, uh, ways to increase revenue. Uh, we have a customer satisfaction survey that we've been giving out for the last 10 years. It was taking a lot of that feedback mm -hmm. and finding out people had an issue with with lack of bathrooms, uh, with entrances into the ballpark, uh, with different amenities. We didn't have the upscale amenities here. Um, then we saw what other teams were doing in, in year-round revenue. For us, we have this wonderful location, uh, but we were only open six months out of the year. And we had a staff that, that was here for, for, for 12 months. So we wanted to figure out ways that we could increase revenue um, and we started to see what teams were doing with banquet space, uh, weddings, business functions, uh, and that really took off. And that's really where a lot of this came together. And it really morphed, and, and that's where I give, give you a lot of credit, is listening to what we had to say, your background, your knowledge of the baseball industry, I think was a big part of how we could fit all this together. Because it was one thing to bring in somebody and say, we want to do a banquet facility. But it was another to say, well, we also want it to be a club level for the baseball games, and it has to be dual purpose. Everything here had to be dual purpose, um, all the way down to the suites we're now using for uh, for wedding receptions. They're 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 using it as where the the bride changes, mm -hmm. and, and so everything here sort of has this dual purpose, and it really tied together really nicely, and it really feels like it's uh, an extension of the ballpark. It wasn't this giant addition. Yeah, yeah. So that being said, uh, that brings me to this. We're now sitting in a space that you and I both had a hand in, in molding and from design, from style, from color, texture. Um, and I recall during the whole process, we had this reoccurring theme that you and I would talk about. I don't know if we talked about it with anybody else, but I know you and I would always talk about contemporary but not pretentious. 
that was a big thing. That was a theme for us. So can you talk a little bit about your initial vision, some of the things that you had seen and how that played into where we arrived today? Yeah, for, uh, for us, or I guess for me, it was, it was big about clean, clean lines, something that was going to be timeless, uh, that wasn't going to be dated. Uh, we we've went to a couple of other ballparks, saw what they put together, uh, got their input uh, from acoustical tiled ceilings with low ceilings. That was a few we didn't really want. We wanted more of an open space. Uh, to the, the lighting was a big issue for some of the teams. Uh, sound was a big issue, um, even to the point where we, we installed the nano wall here to give you that feel for, for the ballpark when uh, when the games are going on. You can feel like the, the atmosphere inside the club is is part of the game, and it's not just its own separate space. And we saw that at a lot of other parks where it was a nice space, but you had no feel during the game. It was just separate. Um, but, yeah, we really wanted something to be elegant, but... At the same, you're still at a ballpark, but we didn't want it to always feel like you're at a ballpark either. So there's a lot of factors that went into it, and I really think we 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 accomplished what we wanted, and, and it, it turned out really nice. Well, I'm glad you brought up the nano wall because there's things that you know as as the design process progressed, there are things that you know we decided collectively, uh, and in some cases, you said, hey this is kind of a direction that we want to go in. Um, and that took convincing to, for, for some. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I remember when we first started talking about the banquet space, that was not just convincing. We had to really back that up with, with data. You did. I mean, you did due diligence on that. So for the benefit of others who are looking into, you know, we talk with other people that are looking to do projects like this, and they're saying, well, hey, how do we justify, you know, is this, was it worth it? Yeah, justification, that's the big word. That, that's something that uh, on, on our end we really had to convince um, not only my board of directors but then the, the owners of the facility uh, because they didn't, they didn't have that vision. And it took a lot of convincing, but it took numbers, and it took talking with uh, other teams in our league, and they were great. They shared hard data with us, and, and we were able to do other research around the, the community. Uh, it was talking to our Convention and Visitors Bureau about – what does the area need? Um, they, they said, we kind of need this upper middle class kind of banquet space that accommodates about 300 people. And that's exactly what we were looking to do. So yeah. that, that was great justification. And uh, is putting those numbers together and saying, okay, and honestly, we had a banquet facility that was right next door to the stadium as well that, that recently went out, of, went out of business because it was just a, 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 not, a, not used properly. So we, we were able to get their numbers as well and say, okay, this place was right next door to us. They were just a banquet facility. These are the numbers that they could do. If we could do half of that, if we can get to their numbers, which yeah. we thought we could, this is a no-brainer for us. So it was sharing that data that really proved that this was the right idea. But, yeah, it took a lot of convincing to convince baseball people that we want to be a, a, a year-round business. Yeah. Well, I tell you, one of the things I've always appreciated about you and the, all the time that we've informally talked and then formally talked is um, – You've always had a vision, and I always got this feeling from our conversations that you could see it. Before it was here, you know, you weren't limited by whatever you didn't have, whatever you had, you could always see. And I felt like this space that we're sitting in right now, you could always see it. And I appreciate that because a lot of times I work with people and they yeah. can't see it. You know, you'll say, hey, you know, what do you think about this and this? They just can't see it. So. Hats off to you for that. I appreciate it. And I, 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 I thank you for mentioning it. It is. I, I guess and not everybody has it. And that's sometimes, and you know, you have it. And sometimes it's frustrating because you'll, you'll deal with a lot of people that don't have it. And for me, it is. It's trying to paint that picture when you, when you do see it. And right. um, I guess it, it, was a, it was definitely a help in this project. And it, uh, you know, it came out how we wanted it to. Good. So final question. As you know, I ask this to my respected friends and colleagues every year. What's the next big thing five years from now? And not just here, but baseball industry in general. Where do you think we're going? It's going to be interesting. You know, technology always plays this this factor. And now it just seems that that's where it's all going in the in-game experience. Um, for us, we're trying to incorporate technology a little bit more. And that's that's almost now a current thing where it's, it's on us. It's not even a five-year trend uh, where it's interacting with the, the, the fan, having the fan interact with, with the game, whether it's through Twitter and, and interacting with the video board. Um, 
social media contests, playing all that stuff and just being a part of the event, not just coming in to watch the event. Um, so that's something that maybe we're on top of right now. I think in five years it's going to be commonplace. Um, it's a good question. It, it's it, You kind of try to look for that next big thing. And for us, in a lot of ways, we see what other teams are doing and we'll, we'll try to, to, to just kind of let them experiment first and then we'll, we'll jump on that train. Um, but again, I, I think it's, it's always going to be customer service based for us, customer focused. Um, as long as you're doing that, you're always going to, to be successful. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where technology goes and, and how much more that can play. Uh, who knows what's going to happen in five years, but yeah. I think that's kind of where we're going. Well, I mean, two seasons ago, maybe three seasons ago, you guys were doing text orders food service wise in the stands which I thought was amazing because you guys have the fast lanes on both ends which is incredible shout out to Poopy by the way for (laughs) amazing food service here at the ballpark but I mean you guys have always in my opinion been pushing we try you know and that's where on on the technology side we try to be cutting edge Uh, it's funny you bring up the the ordering from your seat and we thought that was going to be a, a huge deal we loved it uh, with this renovation, because of the expansion of our, of our concession stands, and the way we, and again, it, it worked perfectly because one of the issues we had was long waits, so we thought adding the, the ordering from your seat was going to be a, a solution to that, but also with the renovation, we added more point of sale. Right. Now we don't have anybody waiting in line, so we saw the number of people using their phones to order food went from, you know, it used to be, uh, say, 100 a game down to, uh, if we were getting two, three people a game, because they didn't have to wait, so that's one of the things technology we love it we thought it's such a great product uh and it kind of went away because i guess we designed it too good where we didn't have waiting anyway but <laughs> well you know what that's an i didn't ever, i didn't think about that this season you would have experienced that out of necessity prior to the renovation you guys had figured out a way to supplement and deal with what you had yep but now you know yeah, and it, it, it's that's exactly how it worked. Um, and it was funny because we talked during the year that we just we didn't seem busy, and we kept saying we're not busy. What are people not buying food? Um, but at the end of the day, we we our per cap went up. Uh, it was the biggest jump we've ever had from a per cap from season to season, and uh, it really all can just be attributed to people weren't waiting in line. If they wanted something, they could just go get it. And, uh, I mean, that was a huge, something that we didn't anticipate we were going to get that kind of jump. So that was another huge benefit to this renovation yeah, that, you know, we, we hoped but never thought it could be that great, that good. So, I mean, I think it's proof that well done renovations or additions proofs in the pudding, right? It, it is. You do it If you do it right, you have to have that vision. And I think, you know, listening to the customer is important. Listening to your your employees, the game day staff, everybody, everybody has some input. Take it all in and um, I guess you get and end up looking like the good guy at the end. But yeah, all this was everybody else's, their their thoughts and their concerns and their issues at the ballpark and we just addressed them and, and we listened to them and then you were great listening to us and that's, that's when you have a winning team. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you sitting down with us and getting into the details. I look forward to seeing uh, your continued growth uh, as a brand at the ballpark and in the community. And as always, we're going to keep in touch. Yeah, no, appreciate it. Thank you.